Good yeah, evening. I get all my stuff from is from Lemon Party. Welcome to Omni Bros Live. Uh, Lemon Party. <laughs> please don't no, don't Google that, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. That sounds. No. I don't even want to go there. Uh, this is Omni Bros Live. Halls previews and reads on a Monday night in October. And questionable websites. <laughs> yeah, I don't even want to know what that one is. I'm joined tonight by Extreme Gabe. Gabe, how's it going, buddy? I'm, I'm doing great, man. Doing good. Uh, another, never mind. I'll leave that alone. But no, I'm good. What have you been up to? I heard you went to the doctor's and you made a mess of your room. <laughs> I did have a doctor's appointment today. This is with my migraine doctor. Mm. And then I came home and I made a video of my Baltimore haul. And um, uh, to uh, uh, I was disorganized, and so to get organized, I had to get all my uh, uh, Baltimore stuff in one place, and that caused me to to get everything else scattered. So my Baltimore <laughs> stuff got organized, but then like my hall stuff got moved, and then I had to get my hall stuff back together. So, and then my action figures got messed up and now my hall, now my Baltimore hall stuff's on the floor and my weekly hall stuff's back on the table. And <laughs> so, yeah, I, I have a big mess to clean up tomorrow. Now with all that mess, I'm worried because I don't think you're ever going to find out what Omar stole from you. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost I, like when you I clean, patted you him down house, pretty thoroughly. I bet you did. <laughs> I bet you did. It's kind of like when you clean your house and you're like, oh, I'm dirty. I have to clean the house. I got to take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he. I gave him a few books. He bought a book for me. I gave him some books. And uh, he, he bought... Um, um, he bought a few things at... Uh, at Baltimore, and nice. I didn't introduce Geo. A week in geekdom. Geo, how's it going? Getting pretty well. Pretty tired, but I am feeling much better because I'm with you, fine gentlemen, and of course the chat and everybody else watching. Happy to be here talking about comics. Woo, comic books. Uh, and you and your professional microphone. Oh yeah. Dude, oh, listen to that. that. We Whoa. should all like invest in. A new <laughs> how does uh, that uh, yeah how does that um does that have a um how does that connect into do you have a laptop or a uh, desktop that, that connects into i'm using my laptop but it's with a boom stand thing and it's connected via uh phantom power and all that stuff it's uh it's yeah. what phantom power yeah, phantom power. It sounds it's like it's what, possessed. It's what you use to connect condenser mics to computers and stuff because it needs the extra oomph for it to work. Is it connected? So it sounds a little. How's it connected eventually into your computer, like a USB port? Uh, for this laptop, yeah, I'm using a uh, XLR to USB connector. Uh, yeah. So okay, I can get the audio into the laptop. Right. Okay. I'm confused. There's a Same whole somebody talk about car parts. There's a whole <laughs> bunch of cables right next to me. That's very complicated. Uh, it's basically the mic goes into the phantom power, and then from the phantom power, I take another cable that goes into a USB port, which goes into my USB C port into the laptop, and you can now listen to my voice with the condenser microphone. Wow. Yeah, I've had this mic since 2017, but I was. I never got around to buying the Phantom Power, so I've never used it on on the broadcast. And I, I got it a few months ago. I'm like, hey, why why don't I just start using it from now on? You know, it's just sitting there. All that effort's worth it because you sound great. I mean, you always sound great. You got that voice, Aww. but you also it's 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 clearer than usual. Yeah, it is. It's crisper. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And I just use my same old Beats headphones I've been using for like three years on the show. Those are yeah. do, no, actually, I do have a, a, a blue snowball. Yeah, snowball. Yeah, those are great too. I just used the things Omar sent me from his other from the previous job. 
Well, he never gave me a, a pair of the headset, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> he probably you figured were... you had all the stuff you needed at work. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no he, he asked. I, I just said no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, don't I thought want, that was when you were you were disconnected from the world for a little bit. Oh uh, no, no, it's just I don't like. Uh, I, I didn't need him to go out of his way to get me stuff, and I'm like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> So yeah, welcome to Tech Bros Live. Yes, <laughs> Gio just didn't want uh, Omar to have his address. I, well, technically he does have it, but you know we all have each other's address, and we all have yes, <laughs> social security number. <laughs> <laughs> and so do about fifteen of my cousins. <laughs> Aw, that's awesome! I am the Barry White of Omni Bros. <laughs> uh, sure, sure, sure. I'll take it. You're the Jose Jose of Omni Bros. Wow, Jose Jose. Rest in peace. He recently passed away, actually. Yeah, that's the only reason I know who that person is, because my uh, my <laughs> mother-in-law would not stop talking about him. I, uh, she comes with me every day to drop the kids off at their uh, their, their therapy or their, their school, and she mm -hmm. won't stop talking about him and all the drama surrounding his death and his family. And I just oh, think it's yeah. funny that his name is Jose Jose. Yeah. For those of you that go me like, what the hell are you guys talking about? It's uh, he's a uh, apparently a, a huge, massive uh, Mexican, I think, uh, singer mm -hmm. who's uh, deeply loved by everyone in the Latino community. Apparently, yeah, his artistic name was Jose 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 Romulo Sosa Ortiz. Whoa, what now? That was his artist, his full name, but his artistic name is Jose Jose. He's a very famous Mexican singer. He recently passed away last month. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just uh, texting with my daughter who just got Star Wars tickets Ooh, uh, for nice. opening day. I'm going to tell my wife to do that because she likes Star Wars. I don't. When is that movie coming out? December what? Uh, let's see. Uh, Friday. It's a Friday. What day did she do it? Let's see. 1120. Uh, <laughs> big show. We're doing the big show at the Alamo. Oh, brother. I don't know. Uh, December, like December 20th, I think. 18th. December 18th. That's what it says in my AMC app, who just coincidentally notified me. Or either that or AMC is watching the show. And yeah, I think it went. It just went live because somebody in the chat is talking about it, that they got yeah. a notification. And there's right a trailer now, my, tonight. Uh, my AMC theater only has one showing. It's 5 p.m. I'm not going to that. December 20th is what we've got tickets for. 11.20 a.m. Nice. We're going in the morning. That's the best time. I can't stand being in a full theater with people next to me. I get anxious. <laughs> Especially full of bunches like stinky, fatty Star Wars fans. Yeah. Hey, and, hey, hey, and... easy, easy. I'm one of those guys. <laughs> but you're not stinky, Star Wars fans. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, hormonal teens just screaming and yelling. At, I, I can't deal with any of that. I'm sorry. I'm an That's why we're guy. going to the Alamo, because you complain once, they are out. They will Ooh. kick you out. Oh man, I would love that. They so will much. physically eject you from if you get a complaint against you, you are out of that theater. That's why I love the Alamo. Just That's complain gone. about everybody so you have a theater by yourself. <laughs> everybody around me, shut up. Okay, <laughs> they're out. It's that Cartman, uh, the Cartman <laughs> mentality where he calls uh, ISIS, not ISIS, I'm sorry, ICE on, on all of his friends in South Park. <laughs> ICE. <laughs> Speaking of the Alamo, uh, apparently uh, Todd McFarlane's doing a signing at an Alamo theater, which is odd. Oh. Yeah. Uppity bastard. He won't do in a torpedo, but doing the Alamo. Huh. Well, if there was a Todd McFarlane book and you wanted to get it 50% off or more, like 2% off extra because of the loyalty discount, you'd get that at InStockTrades.com. Where you can get your books up to 50% off with a loyalty discount adds a 2% extra. Every quarter there's an Omni Bros Live discount code. If you order $50 or more worth of books in the United States, you get free shipping, fabulous customer service, 
fabulous packaging. That's in stocktrades.com. Okay. And then the stream just explodes. We have 30 seconds before it We have 30 seconds to comply. Right. By the way, exactly. uh, shout out to McGaven Comics. I think I said that right. Oh, yeah. I saw that it was his first one. Welcome. Welcome. Let's, let me put that up. Let me go back. Yay, newbie. It's got Dr. Fate as his avatar. Dope. My favorite thing about his avatar and my favorite thing about almost every Alex Ross drawing is he never has a problem showing the bulge. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, McCaven. That's who you've tuned in to. Hope you're happy. <laughs> Welcome. No, but that's oh, true, though. Look at every be. single like DC Alex Ross drawing that you're painting that he does. He always yeah. has a little package bulge going. <laughs> he likes the bulge. He is 100% anatomically correct. Oh, Chad Omnidog is back. Wow. Uh, where is he? He's not watching football. Isn't there football on Mondays? He was out of town for a bit, he says. Hey, right. Jess, how far is Baltimore calling call out con for you? Like, how long were you stuck in a car with Omar? <laughs> uh, well, unfortunately, we had um, major traffic complications both days, Ooh. which sucked. It was awful because when you use GPS, you know, the especially ways which i use both times it's supposed to tell you which way is the best way because i have two ways of going to baltimore and it's supposed to tell you which way is the best and we got stuck in hardcore traffic both times so without traffic it's an hour and 10 minutes but we got we got stuck in um uh, road accidents both times so it was an hour and a half um uh, it's an hour and a half coming back. That sucks. Well, how much is it usually without, without, without the, traffic? Uh, it's a, it's yeah. an hour and ten minutes. Oh, so it's like an extra to the convention minutes. center. Okay, it's not too Which bad. Is, yeah, it's not bad. It's right in the heart. Um, it's all interstate, and then you get dropped off right into downtown Baltimore, and it is right where the Inner Harbor is. It's right where Camden Yards is, where the Orioles play. Right where the Ravens play, right where Baltimore Convention Center is, it's all right there. It's really well laid out, and the convention center is awesome. And it could not have, ah, it's so well um, set up that um, I just walked right in, they scanned my ticket, and boom, I was, I mean, there was no line, nothing. That's good. Awesome. Yeah. I, I just scanned and walked right in. San Diego needs to figure out how to do that the right way. There's always a line. Even for me as a as a dealer, I have to like I have to like throw bowls and like hockey check people in to get to uh, to get through there. Hmm. Uh, how's the uh like where did, did you did, uh, blah huh? after the show or whatever for lunch or, or after show dinner, is there a lot of places nearby the convention center? Oh you yeah. Eat, or are you guys stuck eating like moldy concession food? <laughs> uh, we took them out to dinner because on Saturday I brought them back early. We took them out to dinner because Omar sold a comic book for me. He commissioned, I gave him a commission on it since he sold something for me, um, which I'll tell you after the chat. Cool. Um, so that was his commission. I took him out to dinner. Friday, I took them out to lunch before we went. We got up there early, and we went to lunch at Miss Shirley's, which is a great restaurant in Baltimore. There's three of them in Baltimore and one of them in Annapolis. And we went there for lunch, and then we went to the to uh, the convention. And um, 
so that's there's lots of dining options around the convention. That's what makes a good convention is if there's a, a walking distance that you can get to a, a handful of different places for food options. It's the worst when you're stuck in the middle of nowhere and it's just all industrial and there's like really no eateries and you really kind of have to just rely on like hotel food or concession food. Yeah, Patrick, Patrick Baranski and I, uh, he, I had been on my feet for a while and he was, we had just gotten some signatures and I said, let's, I need to go sit down. Can you, you want to join me for a cup of coffee? And he wanted a banana and they were asking like $3 and 50 cents for a banana. And he was like, Jesus. I think I'll pass. I don't think I need a banana that bad. Holy like, I know. And I, I, we just both sort of sat down and laughed at that. Um, uh, here's a good one about, I found X-Force at, uh, I found X-Force at Baltimore. I'm curious what you think of X-Force, Jess. I dug out my original issues recently to give them a read and couldn't even make it through one issue. Terrible. Oh boy. Uh oh. I love I, that, that old X-Force stuff I think still holds up. Like it's not, you know, it's not Neil Gaiman. It's not literary genius or anything like that. But it's definitely, I think, still enjoyable and readable. I have, was there like three Omnis now? So. Yeah. There's some good stuff in there. Especially, I think it's issue four where it's sideways and all the color is all messed up. They they use a different printer, I think, and they didn't know what comic book colors meant. So that the colors are super weird. Speaking of uh, Baltimore halls, oh, actually, before that, just talk about our uh, our fundraiser. Our fundraiser. Well, we have made it um, to our goal, and we made it to our first stretch mark. So we hit the first goal, five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So Luis and I have to dress up in cosplay, and we are going to do that. As a matter of fact. Uh, my wife ordered me a wig yesterday from Amazon. I am going to be wearing the wig, uh, getting it tomorrow. Um, and I am going to be all decked out. And I have to review, I have to read, and then in cosplay, review Darkhawk. Nice. This coming Sunday, the 27th of October at noon. And this is a fundraiser for comic books for kids a fabulous organization that puts comic books into the hands of sick children in hospitals. And a hundred percent of the money goes to these, to uh, these kids, this all volunteer run this organization. Um, and that is amazingly rare for a hundred percent of the proceeds to go to the people. Um, it's because it's so well run and that it's all volunteer. So Lou has to read Bitch Planet and Pretty Deadly, all the <laughs> volumes. He'll be in cosplay and has to review those. Um, since we made the $500 mark, uh, Gabe has to read and review Berserk. Mm -hmm. uh, the manga, previous to this, Gabe was not a fan of manga. Never read manga before. Never read it before. Never wanted to. And um, the person who lives in the ninth circle of hell, that would be Geo. The <laughs> person with the, <laughs> with the uh, heart as cold as ice has to watch and review Inside Out, the fabulous Pixar movie. One of the best movies ever made, but it moved him not at all. So he has to watch that and report in on it. Yeah. That is because we made $500. Now, the first stretch mark goal was $700. And we made that. We actually made $800. And since we made $700, we're going to be doing an old-time radio hour reading of everybody's favorite book, Batman Damned. Oh, boy. And that is somebody that I did have a 10 minute conversation with at Baltimore, Brian Azzarello. But I talked about Flashpoint Batman and how much I loved it. 
And now, of course, I feel really bad about the root beer because he turned out to be a very nice guy. And now I'm all conflicted and feel bad about myself uh, that I root beered the book because be a new therapy session right there. I know Tuesday nights are going to be reserved for therapy with Omni Bro, Omni Dog. <laughs> we'll do a new we'll do a, a new live episode every Tuesday where it's just us having therapy. Having <laughs> therapy, yeah. I feel bad about myself now. <laughs> What about the, uh, well, this is kind of the point I wanted to get to. What's the, uh, don't we have some prizes for people? Ah, the top fundraiser, the top person to donate. I don't have them in front of me. I mean, I can go get them, but the top prizes, we have prizes to give out to the people that donated the most money in one check, one donation not an accumulated thing and i think maybe uh uh omni chat omni dog might be one of the ones the that's got one and he's in the running these are very rare uh coloring books that have art by famous cartoonists one of them is stan sakai has some art in there Nice. And I only have, I think I've only got five of them. And so the top five donors will be getting a copy of these books. And Gabe has something special to add to these books. These That's right. books, they've also got art by uh, who, who, Mike Waringo passed away, right? He has, yes. They they do have some of his art in there. And they've got some other famous artists in this coloring book. It comes with a package of crayons. and But Gabe is going to have something done to these books that makes them even cooler. That sounds naughty. All right. So to kind of up the ante <laughs> a little bit uh, with these coloring books and uh, hopefully maybe get some more last-minute donations because I think – the donation drive, the fundraiser is closing pretty soon because this Sunday is when we are going to do the first part of our, uh, I don't know what you call it. Like, well, that's when I'm going to do my review on Berserk. That's when Gio is going to do his review on uh, Pixar movies he hates. Jess is going to do all of his stuff as well, as long as, uh, as Luis. But uh, with the uh, coloring books, I am going to have Stan Sakai uh appearing in my store pretty soon uh doing a signing at torpedo so to up the ante a little bit and to kind of raise a little bit more awareness i will get those coloring books uh autographed by stan sakai so Ooh. the top five people will get a stan sakai autograph in those coloring books nice. that's maybe right i'll convince him to do something inside the coloring book i don't know i'll see what i can do oh he no probably promises, would but that's my op that's that's gonna be my options right now yeah, he probably will. He's very generous with his doodles. Um, so the top five donators will be getting a Stanza guy signature and possibly a doodle in there. Um, so that is something that is easy to figure out. Um, we can... Uh, look right out there and figure it out. I know uh, Chad Omnidog is one of them. So thank you, Chad Omnidog, for being one of the top donators. Thanks to everybody who's donated. Yeah, everybody yeah. who's donated. We got $800. That's amazing. Yeah, that's crazy. That's really amazing. Thank you, everybody that donated to this. It's all going for a great cause. That's a lot of people <laughs> digging in their couch cushions. Yeah. So we've got hauls, previews, and reads. Although we have had some questions, and we've had some some slandering of me already. Taylor Brown, no, that's not true. Can we have the wrestler that just met as a special guest? I would like that. <laughs> There should be a guess what character Jess would cosplay competition. It's a good thing. 
Uh, I'll spoil it because the answer is Power Girl. <laughs> I should have thought of Power Girl. This is actually true. <laughs> Jess purely bought the X Force Omni to pose his figures in front of. Ha ha. That is actually true. Taylor Brown's completely right. Um, 90s X Men was great. All of it. Well, not all of it, but, you know, all of it. And we'll talk about some more about that later today. So, uh, you want to do some hauls? What do we haul? Just sure. have a big ass haul. He did a video on it and he went to a convention. Yeah. It's all my wife's money anyway, so thank her. Chad Omnidog spending the wife's money. <laughs> nice. Living the good life. Living the good life. Spending the wife's money. Okay, I will thank her. <laughs> Oh, you got a newbie just arrived in the I chat. I see that T. Lar Bloon, longtime caller, first time listener, wondering what the consensus is on Spawn. Thinking of trying it out, but not sure where to jump in or if it's good. Uh, I mean, you know, three hundred issues of Spawn. I'm pretty sure not all of them are great. There, there's some good stuff in there. Uh, I, I haven't read all 300 issues. I haven't probably even read more than like maybe like 50 issues of Spawn, to be honest. Uh, it's good to start from the beginning. The beginning stuff is really good uh, after the first couple issues because that's when uh, Todd McFarlane starts hiring like Neil Gaiman and he starts hiring Alan Moore to do the writing. So there's some really, really cool creative stuff that happens there. And then it kind of... I don't know, it kind of goes off a little bit for me where I stopped reading it. And then a couple years ago, they they do a, uh, it was called Spawn Resurrection, where Alice Simmons returned to Spawn. And uh, that stuff is really good, too. That stuff's collected in trades, so you can pick that stuff up. I want some of those Spawn Origin hardcovers, but a lot of that's out of print. Uh, but I'm, I'm looking forward to that kind of stuff pretty soon. Other than that, I mean... Uh, it's it's spawn. I mean, granted, yeah, it's gone for three hundred issues. I think that's purely just Tom McFarlane momentum. I don't think it's because it's that good of a book. Yeah. Uh, it's we've been asked like twice now. Did any of you guys see the uh, Bloodshot trailer? No, but I'll show you the Adam Hughes magic print that I got. Oh, that's awesome. That's really cool. Wow. This is better than Bloodshot. Oh, this yeah. is magic. It's I got Adam this Hughes. from Adam Hughes. It's, it's magic and it's magic, if you know what I mean. I know what you mean, dude. Look at the clawy hand down here. Perfect. Awesome. Look at the she's sword the most, and everything. She's the most manga-esque character the X-Men have. That's awesome. Like, straight up. She could be yeah. like a, a demon-hunting manga character. I was about to say she's a hot chick who's like half possessed by the devil. Yeah, yeah. has a big I ass love sword. Her. She's so great. I, just I was had to show the, that. I was gonna get the Marvel Legends, but I have the uh, Kotobukiya statue that you have, the the tiny one. So I'm good with that. That's pretty cool. That's just an awesome design. That's the best design both? they've ever nice. done for her. Yeah. Yeah, and I have both, and I'm happy with both. I'm and I an want. Expert on x-men but apparently all the x-men that i like are magic based like magic scarlet witch uh, i like those type of mutants and did you guys see that uh xm statue for magic coming out i showed you guys in the chat, right? yeah i'm pretty That's sure it's cool yeah it was pretty much the coolest thing you've ever showed us uh magic over feral lad Jess, they're asking you. Uh, it yeah, yeah. <laughs> Magic beats out Feralad. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Yep. I don't know as much about Magic as I do about Feralad, but I want to know more about Magic. Magic's mm -hmm. got way more of a history than Feralad. Feralad's history lasted about seven issues. Yeah, he's no longer. 
<laughs> they do have something in common, though. They both died. Yeah, that's true, but uh, Feral Lad never came back. He never came back, so... No. Nope. Yeah. Nope. All right, Jess, what else did you get? Oh, okay. I got uh, a Walk Through Hell 2 Garth Ennis book from Aftershock Comics. A Walk Through Hell 1 was trippy fantastic. I loved it. So I was really excited that this came out so quickly. Uh, Black Hammer 45, Ooh. which collects awesome. volumes 1 through 4. This has something to do with Nazis and a host of occult threats and their ultimate aerial warrior, the Ghost Hunter. I have no idea what this is about, but it seems super good. So it was good enough for me to really want it. Gabe super baited me on these when he I just said, are these any good? And he said, yes. So that was enough for me. Headlopper one through three. That wasn't me. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that was just some random yes, huh? Probably. Might have been yes to a different question. I don't know. I've been, <laughs> you never read it? I don't think I've ever looked at uh, Headlopper. Oh, well, I'm reading it one through three now. <laughs> <laughs> and then you I got... you a question, the answer is always yes. Yeah, Exactly. <laughs> Oh, Daniel K in the chat says Headlopper is so great, so cool. Nice. Uh, Britannia deluxe Ooh. hardcover from uh, Valiant. So I'm up for this. I want to read that. It's awesome. Yeah, me too. The premise sounds really cool. And the book I'm very excited for Marvel Masterworks. Hey, got it. Nice. Yeah. Very happy with that. I'm glad they put that out. This is that's a 70s comic that's very readable, very readable. So that's it. Besides all the stuff I got at the, all the stuff that I got at the uh, the con. The con, yeah. I also got this action figure, Silver Samurai. That's kind of random, Judge. Why'd you pick that one up? Uh, he was cheap, fifteen bucks, and I needed a villain. I I got a uh, diorama, and I need more villains. And this was a good. Um, I have a lot of Wolverines, and this was a good Wolverine villain. I love that throwback packaging. That's like the old school X Men toys I used to buy as a kid. Yeah. Are you gonna open? That? Sorry. Are you gonna open that? Oh yeah, he's going. He's going to be uh, attacking Wolverine, and somebody's going to be coming to Wolverine's defense. All right, um, here's what you do. Okay, you take the packaging, and at the bottom, uh, you can cut through it with a knife, so it op so you have like a slit that opens, and you can take the figure out. That way, you don't have to ruin the bubble packaging. Okay, so you keep that packaging in. And uh, if you want to display it later on or something, because I love that packaging. That looks awesome. I do too. So if yeah, you want to preserve really cool. that, look at the back. You cut, in, you cut it through the bottom and you make like a little doorway uh, slot and you slide the figure out. Yeah, that's old school packaging. I love that stuff. I'm just that's all that's on the stock. Mm -hmm. that, that's trying to convince people like me to buy toys again. <laughs> I had I had the original uh, Silver Samurai as a kid. He looks so shiny. I like it. It's very silver. Mm -hmm. And for it's 15 bucks, like this is steel. It has nothing like how he looked in a stupid movie either. <laughs> it was a transformer. Yeah, he was only 15 bucks, and I called Tyler right away, and I said, Tyler, should I get him? And he's like, oh, yeah, of course. Wolverine needs a villain. So, uh, yep, that's it for my haul, plus all the stuff that I got at the con, but I did a whole video on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can check out that video. Yeah, I just put that video up. And I do want to see that diorama when you build it. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, actually, here it is. Uh-oh, are we going to have a Nemo situation? Whoa, that is awesome. I didn't know it was that big. 
Wow. Yeah. That's what she said. Diorama. It's what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that is oh, so cool. Yeah. Ooh. Is that from BBTS? Yeah. Nice. Damn it. And it came in a nope. sleep out no. in the backyard box. Oh, man. Jill's getting super that. bait. He's fighting it. He's fighting it. Uh, I can't see that. Come on. I don't need that in my life right now. Here's what the back of it looks like. It gives Damn. you a picture of what it can, what it really looks like. Oh, boy. That reminds me of like the Spawn Alley playset or the, uh, the Ninja Turtle Sewer playset I had as a kid. 30 figures at once. Damn. How? That would be a dance party, though. I don't, that's not what I want. Yeah, that'd be a lot of just going nuts to butts to try and put them together like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be a cool turtles display, by the way. Fighting yeah, the foot. Yeah, the, the, the rooftop and stuff. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, they would be. Yeah, but then you would need to buy like 50. Well, if it's 30, if it holds 30 figures, you need to get 26 foot soldiers and all four. Or 20, 25 foot soldiers and one shredder. That's true. Or 20 uh, foot soldiers, one shredder, one shredder. Uh, six mousers, yeah. uh, and a parches in a pear tree. <laughs> Uh, somebody asked us uh, if we wait a minute. What was it? Uh, what uh, what would what would the accessories be for an Omni Bros action figure set? Uh, uh, too many, many, too many unread books. Yeah, <laughs> books like a stack of unread books. Yeah, <laughs> at, at least three chunky trade Omni omnibuses. You would need pizza, uh, the Big Nemo book. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jess, Jess would have painkillers, <laughs> a bottle of painkillers. Uh, <laughs> like he would have like a trap door thing where he hides all of his stuff from his wife. Uh, <laughs> uh, a, a bag full of money. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Books that shrink wrap. Uh, a busted computer. <laughs> That's the Nemo. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Freddie had a sealed, dusty box set. Akira. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the cobwebs. <laughs> the cobwebs on it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you 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 would need like a uh, 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 the uh, the cosplay variant version of Justice Figure with a wig and and the, oh, yeah. the outfit and everything. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. I'm trying to think of, of the rest of us. Um, I don't know. I'm mm -hmm. trying to think about the rest of us. I'm thinking my mine would probably have some like some like dumbbells or something like that. Some some workout mm -hmm. gear. Um, your, yours uh, would come with a spinner rack. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. I have a spinner, spinner rack, rack with '90s cool. comics. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and Jess has to have vinyls. That's true. Uh, like mini vinyls soundtracks. Yeah, I'm buying vinyl still a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean, yeah, I'm possibly going to be getting in trouble for him. I think Geo would come with a little pop of himself. <laughs> a Geo pop. A Geo pop. Mini yeah. pop. Yeah, mini pop. Uh, you probably have to have some like, uh, oh, you know what you would have to do? Like those SH figure art figures. You would have like those power up like diorama pieces uh, effect pieces yeah 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 <laughs> uh, omar's would come with a bourbon and cranberry juice That's oh true. god a tiny one a, ti a little tiny one a little tiny one with little tiny omar <laughs> oh by the way dave is talking about nemo and i didn't know this but apparently nemo had an arcade game did you guys know that Nemo Dream Dreamland Nemo? Little yeah. Nemo? Yep. I didn't know I, that. I remember, I remember it had a it had a, a Nintendo game, but I didn't yeah. know it had an arcade. Don't tell anyone, but I have an emulator with that game and I recently found out that it had a ROM and I'm like, oh, it's the Jess Nemo book. That's awesome. It reminded me of your little accident. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
let's see. Right, Riley's figure would come in a bunch of candy. Oh my god, from the dollar store, yeah, like or, big or, movie candy, and like a little a little bottle of tahini that he loves so much. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, the game came out in 1990 from Capcom. That's awesome. The Little Nemo book? I mean, game? Yeah. Yeah. Side scrolling fantasy arcade game released by Capcom in nine, 1990 based on the uh, Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland. What uh, system was that for? Did you just say? Uh, it was just arcade, like the machine. Oh, an arcade. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and of course, just is coming like a bottle of root beer. Oh yeah, I gotta have a tiny bottle of root beer. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, haul what I hauled. I want to show you guys real quick. Yeah, what'd you get? We're gonna be here yeah. all day talking about action figures. Yeah, seriously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's nice. what I got. I hate Fairyland. I went with the green cover because I, I I like books that are uh, popping in color. And I love that the first one is bright pink, so I had to get this one too in bright green. Um, for you manga lovers, I got Berserk Volume 40. What else did I get? I got uh, Wonder Woman, uh, the Greg Rucka Volume 3 to finish out that run. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sadly, I, I know you're going to hate me for this, but I'm not getting the deluxe hardcovers. This is Monstrous Volume 4. Oh, that's uh, fine. If you're getting them in that format already, might as well just keep it going. Yeah. And a natural Volume 3, because apparently people think I am a furry lover. Wait, what? What's unnatural? <laughs> it's about anthropomorphic animals, and it's like a sexy drama that happens with murder and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's a little not safe for work, I guess, from Image Comics. And somebody left a comment when I did a review on it saying, like, I was a, a dumb furry, stupid furry or something. I always, <laughs> I always describe what? it as Miss Piggy if Miss Piggy was a cam girl. Some of those covers yeah. were pretty racy on, on that book, I remember. Yeah, oh, it's. Wow, it's, it's, I never I'm, heard of this I'm, book. I'm a huge fan of uh, Mika. I, oh, I was. Mirka and Dolfo, and I cannot show you these covers because there's nudity on them. Okay. I bought one. I bought one just because Joe Mad did the cover. <laughs> uh, oh wow, this is very risque. Let me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some. There's some. Yeah, there's some. Uh, oh, it's, it's pushes the envelope a little bit on those covers. Who puts it out? Image Comics. Uh, yeah, it's about. Uh, animals and it's like in a totalitarian state where they pair you up with other animals uh like a dating service but she is against that and there's a murder conspiracy going on uh and i, I love the artist i love her drawings so i wanted to pick up the book and apparently if you own this book you are a weirdo <laughs> oh but, uh, i'm not into furries at all but i love a good story so i don't care if they're <laughs> anthropo Morphic animals or whatever. Yeah, it's like somebody saying you're a furry because you like black side. Yeah, I mean, check check. Uh, like this is pretty cool. Some of the extra features. Yeah, the art's really pretty. Oh, this one's pretty cool too. Yeah, I, I love Mirka's uh, arts, and this is just three issue, three uh, volumes. This is the last one, so it collects volumes or issues nine through twelve. It's the end of the story right here. I think you Epic. should do you and be happy with whatever you want to do. That's all I got. All right. All, so, all any of us got. Oh. So my turn. This is going to be like the weirdest. This is going to be like a, a, a Earth 2 game kind of haul. Like seriously. This is going to be this is going to be a strange, strange haul. Uh, okay. So Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. So, like I said, this is gonna be a this is gonna be like a one not a once in a lifetime. But it's gonna be like the, the strangest haul I've ever put on the show here. Uh, starting off with volumes one, <laughs> two, oh and yes, three of berserk. Awesome. He went berserker. I went berserk on berserk 
for for sure. Uh, I'm not going to say too much about it now. Uh, I'm going to save my review um, on this material for uh, our Sunday show, um, mm -hmm. which is for you know our, our fundraiser specialty show. Uh, but I will say, uh, I don't know if I even want to say it here yet or not. I save it for the other show. I might just save all my all my all my thoughts and feelings about manga in general. Uh, all right. For now, that, for that. Those show. are volumes one, two, and three. Yeah, this is volumes one, mm -hmm. two, and three. This is what was is collected in that first deluxe hardcover. That deluxe one. Out. Okay. Uh, a lot of people were like, I were, were asking me, how come I just didn't get? I should get the hardcover. I should get the hardcover. I should get the hardcover. I didn't want to get the hardcover because a, I didn't know if I was going to like it, and b, and really most importantly, is I wanted to have the smaller digest books as my first like entryway into manga and have that full manga experience with with the smaller trades but i was going to get my cherry broken i wanted it to be done you know the right way with with the smaller mm -hmm. format that it seems to be the standard for for manga i didn't want my first entryway to be you know a big oversized hardcover and then later on have to go down to the you know the, the smaller manga size i like i like these smaller sizes to be honest um good also, along with that, continuing in this trend is uh, Dissolving Classroom. <laughs> <laughs> I got Dissolving Classroom because it was like nice. $4. $4. Uh, this will also be, real quick, this will be my, my quick read because it's the only thing I, I could talk about that I read because I read all of this. But I can't talk about it or I won't talk about it. Uh, I'm about halfway through this. It's really weird. Mm -hmm. It's uh, an anthology. No, it's not an anthology. That's the incorrect word. It is uh, a series of short stories uh, involving these two characters you see on the cover here. They're a brother and sister team uh, who are basically con uh, connected, possessed, worship uh, the devil, and just lots of unfortunate, disgusting, terrible things happen to the people around them that is caused uh, by the brother saying, I'm sorry, all the time. So it's, it's really odd and unusual. Like I said, I'm only halfway through, um, but I'm enjoying this a lot right now. Uh, I'm enjoying. Oh, you know what? I'll talk about it here. I'm enjoying manga a lot right now, everybody. Uh, I've I've been. I, I think I'm a convert. Uh, Gio and Riley wow. and Luis has uh, changed my mind on it. I've taken back every ignorant thing I've ever said. That half, that was basically half joking, which consisted uh, of ew, gross. Yeah, I mean, there is still. <laughs> The fact that what was still kind of it is still kind of odd for me to read these backwards because this is backwards reading, but you're reading, you read the word balloons and and you follow the panels, right mm -hmm. to left. But when you get into the word bubbles, you then read it left to right. So it's like going backwards and then going forwards, going backwards and going forwards. I, I did get lost a few times, not too much in here. It's laid out uh, a little more simply. The panel layouts in dissolving classroom um but berserk the panels are kind of they kind of mix up a little bit so i did yeah. get confused and turn around a few times but nothing too bad where i didn't really quite understand i had to go back and reread a section once or twice um but that happens a lot with regular comics too a lot of times those things especially like two page, two page spreads don't really work out very well uh i do see with that recent Forbes article that was kind of talking about how people kind of staying away from like superhero comics and, mm. and manga has become more and more popular. I 100% can feel that. I can understand why that is. And it's something that I felt uh, myself for a while that current comics today are is really super boring, especially superhero comics. And I think I'm going to just kind of stick new wise. I'll be getting a lot more manga. You'll be seeing a lot more manga, I think, popping up in my halls and my reads. That wow. Is, just because the the reading of these is, is, is easier because, like with Berserk, um, I think basically almost it, uh, every manga series out there, yeah, it might be 40 volumes or, or 100 volumes, but it's, it's, it's consistent with the writing and the artist, because it's all done by the same person or at least the same person overhead or overseeing the entire thing. Because I guess from my understanding, a lot of some of these mangas are done by like a team. Uh, so yeah, so it's it's consistent with that. Uh, it's all one solid image or one all solid idea. Like there's no, I have to now, in order to understand Berserk uh, after volume 12, I now have to go read 
you know, Hunter x Hunter, or now I have to read uh, him showing up in One Piece or, or anything like that. There's no, there's no crossovers, no, there's no jumping around. Mm-hmm. There's none of that uh, nonsense that we deal with a lot in, in comics today. Uh, there's really no, no cancellations. Yeah, there's no cancellations. There's no, uh, there's really no corporate <laughs> interference. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Yeah, I told you this is Earth. This is it's like an Earth Two game. I actually came with like a gold <laughs> T or something. Uh, but yeah, no. So I, I am one hundred percent. I'm going to start jumping more into manga. I'm, I'm probably be a little more choosy because I do feel that there is a lot of weird stuff in manga that I'm not into, especially with the, the stigma or the, the false idea of how, a lot of these female characters are made to look like over sexualized children a lot of times. Um, even though they're not, but they're kind of, I feel like they're, they're kind of drawn to look that way. And that's, that's, that's not really for me. I'll probably stick more to more, a lot of the action and drama stuff. If that's not really that type of thing. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So with that, I think my next dive in is going to be uh, this other pickup I got, which is the 20th Century Boys, which is a series that I've been hearing about yeah. for years and years and years and years. Um, yes. Especially when I used to listen to 11 o'clock comics a lot. They, uh, one of the guys on there always talked about 20th century boys and Pluto. So there's going to be a change of format here a little bit with me for sure. <laughs> oh, that is so awesome. Holy so, smoke. Okay. So the there chat you go, is going yeah. insane. And I'm not, like I said, I'm 100%. Like it's, it's, if you're tired, I'm, I'm 38 years old. I've been reading comics for 30 years. And that's backwards because it's manga. Um, as uh, if, if I'll, I'll say this, and I'll say this for myself, I'll, I'll 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 put a bug in anybody's ear. If you're tired or you're kind of looking for something new in comics, make the step, make the leap, try try manga. Um, with Berserk, uh, I I read the they're, they're quick reads too. There's not a lot of over dramatic uh, exposition or, or anything. Like that. A lot of storytelling is done in the story and inside the artwork. If you read comics in the 70s or the 80s, especially like the Jim Shooter era, where the comic art explained the story and everything was very user friendly or, or, or first come friendly, you know, the whole idea that everybody's every comic is somebody's first comic. That mm-hmm. is alive and well in the mangas that I've read so far, where it's very easy to get into and accept and, and follow along. Uh, yep. You kind of get explained the story, not over and over again, but they do it in such a way where you explain the story and people's purposes over and over again, but in, in, a, in a logical manner. So yeah, definitely jump into into manga. I, I, I recommend, it's, it's something out there for everybody, but I do definitely recommend if you need something new and different and you're tired of crossovers and events and cancellations and renumbering and every other complaint that we've had about comics for probably the last 15 years or so it's solved with these and that's a bold statement and i i i feel like i dedicated a lot of my life to comics i do work in the comic book industry comics is how i put food on my table and how i pay for my kids therapy and and all that kind of stuff and i'm here to say that i i love manga now whoa so boom. Awesome. Now, but that said, I also did nice. get all the uh, all the Thor volumes. Uh, <laughs> nice. There you go. The chat can calm down now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I got a uh, God of Thunder volumes one and two, Thor one and two. I got this in an awesome. I was hoping he was in the chat. I haven't seen him in the chat today. I uh, I purposely haven't hit him back up because this is a trade we did on the group through Facebook uh clark nato in the chat i purposely didn't reply back to you after i got these i wanted to give you a a public thank you and shout out here on omni bros live uh for great packaging speedy delivery that sounded like like mr rogers neighborhood uh (laughs) clark nato is one of my favorite people on the group and in the chat Uh, we've done a lot of trades and sales back and forth before uh great guy and i just wanted to say a huge thank you to him for this, and uh, now I don't have to worry about getting the omnibus. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep with these uh, oversized hardcovers. So, nice, very that nice. Is, that is my haul. That is my uh, my convert into uh, the threshold and the church of manga as well. 
I love manga. That's the takeaway from Gabe's Hall. I love manga. It's great. I you know I don't want to get too much into Berserk stuff because that's 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 separate. That's that's specially for mm -hmm. our, our our charity event. Right. Every, everything I said, I it, I'll, I'll, I will repeat again on Sunday. Uh, how much easier it is to get into manga. How much easier it is to read, understand, get drawn in, and fall in love, and continue with a story or a group of characters that you love and that you're attached to and not have it split off into 30 different issues in another book or taken over by a different writer who doesn't understand or has a, a different take on your character and they change or the art changes. Or like I said, every complaint we've ever had about comics in general over the last 15 to 20 years I, I'm not having that so far with, with manga. I don't see that happening. I mean, One Piece might have 99 volumes, but it's all done by the same the same people, the same group, the same idea. It's all a one-story element. And I don't need to read everything else to continue the the continuity or the story of, 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 that, mm -hmm. of that group. So, so coming up on my list, uh, more manga. I, I do want to read One Piece. I do want to read... My Hero Academia, uh, Pluto. I've been hearing lots of good stuff about uh, 20th Century Boys. Like I said, that's coming up next. I'm going to continue with Berserk. Uh, I don't have Volume 4 yet. Uh, my store doesn't have Volume 4 yet. I, I have it on order. We have a lot of manga in my store now. Uh, we've had it in there for a while. So this is also, I think, going to help propel and bring more people into my store that I could sell manga to. Uh, especially like the younger, the newer generation of comic readers, they're not going for comics anymore. I've, I've noticed that for a little bit now and for a while. Uh, it's really hard for younger generation of folks who haven't read comics for 20, 25 years to get into comics and they're going towards manga because that seems to be the what I got into when I got into comics in the, in the, the late 80s, early 90s. You had TV shows, you had you had toys. You had everything that that involved the comics out there as as well. There was literature along with the TV show X Men, the cartoon. Followed. They did a lot of stuff out of the comics. You don't see that anymore today. Those the movies that are out there don't follow the comics. You can't watch the movie and then get into a comic and, and feel like you're in the same universe or you have the same grasp or hold or understanding of these characters. With manga, you can. You could read. You could watch. Uh, Attack on Titan, and then jump into the manga and, and, and feel familiar. And you don't get that with regular comics anymore right now. So I think that is what's bringing a new generation of people into reading manga, That I'm, and I'm bringing them into my store because we're stocking a large supply of manga. So that's 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 that. That's how that works. That's awesome. That I is awesome. The chat Just is you're next, dude. Just you're next. <laughs> I'm trying to point to you. I don't. Sorry, you're next, Jess. <laughs> I have. Uh, well, I read Dissolving Classroom, and I've got uh, Shiver that I'm reading by Ito for my uh, yeah. Halloween yeah. read. Oh, so I want to get more Ito stuff. Uh, like, I oh get, yeah, like Shiver, Frankenstein. This guy at my store, who's a big manga guy that I've been talking to about, telling me uh, Frankenstein was great. Shiver was good. Uh, 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 Uzumaki. Uzumaki is another. Uzumaki. One. I read that last year. Yeah, so that's crazy. These, these, these shelves are going to be filling up with manga pretty soon. And, and the thing is, is that they're easy enough to read where I can get a stack of them and not be like, oh, shit, it took me five years to read a stack of comics. Like, <laughs> but yeah. Berserk was a, a quick read, especially volume three. Like, I read volume three in like 20 minutes. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing. Like, There's a lot that happens in that volume three. If you want to hear more, uh, join us Sunday. 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 Right. Sunday. Man. There's so oh. many awesome comments, and I'm sorry that I, we can't get through all of them. But that's <laughs> chat is awesome. I love the chat. Chat's going crazy. About I knew that Gabe this was, I knew that something crazy was coming out of it. Uh, <laughs> is, is, is Utaku Bros this, this Thursday, Jess or Gio? Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna be doing it. solicitations for okay. November. I think. I think I'll I think I'll pop in. Uh, maybe uh, I'm off Thursday. This Thursday, I'm taking Thursday. Hell yeah! For a special occasion. Oh, and I did forget uh, to show this. I got this as well. It's Demon Slayer Volume 8. I had to That's wait a whole one. month. I had to wait a freaking month to get this book because it was sold out everywhere. 
I, I put my order in, but it was out of stock. So I had to wait until they got more books so they can ship it out to me. So this volume made of Demon Slayer. And I don't know if I showed this earlier, but uh, the Ancient Magus Bride volume 11. So I, forgot. I think you either showed that to us or we talked about it on the, on the previews. Like ah, all right. Somebody's off static. -y. I don't know if that's Geo. No, not like visually. I mean, like your audio. Oh, no. no. Yeah, that is you. It's me, it's me, but that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so what's next? Uh, hauls? We just, uh, I think we just... I think we hauled. Yeah, we yeah, hauled. Yeah. Uh, previews, 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 previews. Right. Uh, Gio, you might need to like, unplug your microphone. And yeah, you might need to do something there. There you, there you go. go. Whatever you did there, fixed it. Yeah. And oh, now, now, now it's wor nope. Now it's worse. It sounds like when your phone's too close to something. Yeah, you're getting feedback or something. That's weird. That's weird. I'll figure it out. Figure it out. Keep going. All right. Oh, he's muted. Okay, cool. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get into uh, uh, this week's releases. Okie doke. And just when we do this, um, just so that I can still see stuff. <laughs> Uh, can you do it where it's it's the my screen in the middle and then the rest of us on the side like that format? Uh, your screen in the middle. Yeah. I'll 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 try and do what you want. Tell. I'll try something and you tell me stop when okay. I get what you want. Yeah, when you share the screen before clicking on full screen, it shows there. there that's go. the window. That's the window he yeah. wants. I think that's cool. Okay. Does it sound better? Not 100%. Or is it still... Damn it. All right. Give me a second. All right. Sorry, Gio. <laughs> All right, everybody. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at uh, the graphic novel trade paperback collected editions released for the week of October 23rd, which is the best week of the year. It's the best week of the year. All right, so let's go ahead and always... Ooh, oh, yeah. Ascender. Ascender, volume one is coming out from Image Comics. And again, you can spot all these books tomorrow afternoon on instocktrades.com, their site will refresh and update with all the new prices and all the new books 12 pacific 3 p.m on the east coast time how about so, yeah, now one. yeah you sound great now all right awesome uh ascender volume one trade paperback and evolution volume three going down to dark horse hey look, uh -huh. it's <laughs> there it is uh, volume three of the deluxe Yep, volume three. This collects, I'm guessing each one is three. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Now this is going to take five times as long because now Gabe's into every manga. <laughs> He's not going to go, and here's all the crappy stuff that you and Omar like. He's going to go, here's all the crappy stuff that I like, too, now. We're going to convert Jess. Oh, uh, no. We're going to gang up on him. No, 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 no. I don't get, have the room. Get berserk. <laughs> Berserk. Uh, all right, uh, here's a here's one that everybody's going to be clamoring for, and this came out just in time, right before Halloween. This Harold County mm -hmm. hardcover, library edition hardcover, volume four. Brilliant book. Uh, I I am a hero omnibus trade paperback, volume eleven. Yeah. Uh, Invisible Kingdom, volume one. And Stephanie McCraney's Space Boy. Trade paperback volume five. I have no idea what most of this is. IDW is coming out this week. Uh, they're getting, uh, they're putting out Cosmo Knights, trade paperback volume one. GI Joe, a real American hero, trade paperback volume twenty three. Gramercy Park, Marvel Action Avengers. This is really good if you got if you got younger 
younger, older than toddler kids. If you want to get them into comics and they like Avengers. Mm, okay. I heard good things about Gramercy Park. Gramercy Park. Yeah, I had heard good things about this from like people in the know that know comic books. So I don't That's know cool. who, any of the I don't know the names of any of these creators. So yeah, I think it's a uh, I think it's European. And Screwball cartoonist who made Funnies Funny and hmm. Star Wars Return of Jedi graphic novel adaptation. DC Comics this week is coming out with American Carnage, Black Canary, Ignite uh, trade paperback. That's from DC Zoom. That is 50% off. That's their uh, younger reader uh, geared uh, publishing mm -hmm. line. Uh, Hex Wives, which I've heard a lot of good things about. Uh, Naomi season one hardcover. Super Sons book two, the Fox Glove mission. That's also from DC Zoom. Teen Titans volume two, turn it up. Wonder Woman hardcover volume one, the Just War. I, I'm not sure. What Wait, what's going on with that? That's oh, that's Willow Willow Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. He uh, recently left to do uh, the Sandman project thing. Is this yeah. is this after the the Greg Rucka stuff or uh, after Rucka? I think Robinson wrote a few issues and some other writers, and then uh, Wilson came on board. Okay. And that's something else that makes comic books really confusing. You don't get with manga. All right. Oh man! Now <laughs> is <laughs> <it> doing? <laughs> Holy smoke! <laughs> Uh, and then uh, here's something for all the 90s comics fans out there, which is probably just me, is <laughs> our 25th anniversary omnibus. That thing is massive. That, thing is a that is also 50% off. Oh, man. And so nice. Bucks, man, this thing is going to be awesome. Uh, I probably won't pick it up anytime soon. Uh, but I do have fond memories of having to do extra chores when I was a kid to get money so I can buy zero hour and profit hmm. number five. So I, I wow. Remember. No, yeah, my mom gave me my mom gave me zero hour number zero, but made me earn it by doing extra chores. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember that way of uh hey, dad. And and just think it's been twenty five years since that. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, and then uh, down here with Marvel, we have uh, Amazing Spider-Man by uh, excuse me by Nick Spencer, Volume nice. Five, Marvel Epic Collection, uh, Daredevil, Woman Called. Actually, it's called a a Woman Called Widow. They just didn't put the whole thing on the solicitation. <laughs> it and sounds all... like it said like <laughs> Woman Called. You better pick up. Yeah. yeah. Like that that's how he just has every girlfriend saved in his phone. It's just a woman. <laughs> uh and then uh Doctor Strange Epic Collection. Uh Triumph Ooh. and it's Triumph and Torment, but of course I got cut off. And awesome. then uh Fantastic Four Behold Galactus Marvel Select Hardcover. Wow. That's a that's like twice twice the rebranding because it was originally the big book, now it's just little. Uh, and a select hardcover. <laughs> I think that might be a maybe a hint. They're doing a, doing a lot of this Galactus storyline over and over again, being reprinted. Hmm. I wonder <laughs> why. What going to do with an upcoming movie? Who knows? <laughs> uh, and another great one for uh, X Men fans is Mutant X Complete Collection Volume Two. Superman Life Story. This was a huge, huge, uh, huge hit. Superman Life Story. I want to read that. I think that's Spider Man. I'm sorry, Spider Man. Spider Man. Yeah. Uh, Star Wars Galaxies Edge trade paperback. Uh, huh. And another uh, uh, one of these timely omnibus. So this is Timely's greatest uh, hardcover Golden Age Simon and Kirby. Omnibus, nice. so this is a golden age Captain America, and there's two covers here, of course. 
dollars. Those are both fifty percent off, and so is this write your own Marvel trade paperback. That is fifty percent off. Cool. And one of my favorite X Men storylines is getting a milestone trade paperback, and that's Executioner song. Love the Executioner song. Does it have the Strife files in here? Yes, Strife Strife files is one of the coolest things you're ever going to read ever. So good thing that's in there. Super important. All right, going down with Dynamite, uh, Nancy Drew Hardy Boys crossover, uh, the mystery of the missing adults. Boom Studios has got the Adventure Time. Uh, Marceline, I don't know that character. Uh, and you have Angel, 20th anniversary hardcover. Goldie Vance and Jim Henson's Power of Dark Crystal. And then down here is all this crap. <laughs> oh, of course, you're sure just, uh, you know, point out what you know. You're the manga. Uh, I'm not a fan of a comic got killed, but I know it has a huge following, so that volume is probably going to get uh, picked up by a lot of people. Uh, Alice and Zoroku, I have not read it, but I do want to check it out. What about uh, this uh, Black Butler? I, I, that name's always popped up a lot. Yeah, I, I haven't. I was going to watch the series, but I haven't, and I haven't read the manga either. I, I can't comment on that one, but it is pretty popular. Same with uh, Cardcaptor Sakura. That's the collected, that's a new printing of like a, I think it's oversized hardcover. It's an emblematic series from the 90s. And there's some uh, Peanuts collected boxes. Ooh, nice. Um, Gilbert Cast 30, which I never really got as a kid. Yeah. I wasn't even a big fan. Even the cartoon was kind of like whatever, because it's all office humor and, you know, mm -hmm. office uh, humor. Uh, Dark Tower Gunslinger. What's that? It's a, apparently a box set. Because Gunslinger's been out of print, hasn't it? Or Dark. Dark Tower. I mean, same thing, right? This. Uh, oh, this may be something that completes the whole thing. I have no it's idea. A I box set that includes the graphic novels: Gunslinger, uh, Battle of Tool, The Way Station, The Man in Black, and Last Shots. I'm guessing it's the comic book adaptation, like a little box set. I think this might be some of the newer stuff. I don't know. Maybe somebody in the chat. I'm sure somebody in the chat's way into this, and they can really kind of give us more information about all this. Oh uh, yeah, the card captor stock with his berserk deluxe size. That's awesome. Uh, Disney manga. See, even Disney's getting in on it. Uh, Doctor. No, I don't know any of those. <laughs> but I do like Zero. He's a cute puppy. He's dead, but he's cute. Oh, Night Refer Christmas? Yeah, this is uh, yeah. this is good stuff. It's Night Refer Christmas. I mean, I love all that mm -hmm. stuff. No idea. Golden Kamui, that's a popular one. That's a new one. People are excited about that one. What's that about? Uh, it's, it's in... Um, uh, geez, what's the name of the... Uh, it's the war that got uh, Russia <clears throat> and Japan involved. What was that called again? With China? The Sino-Soviet War? It's, it's around that time period, and it's with, uh, based on the Anui people, which were the a real, uh, like the OG indigenous Japanese people uh, that were long uh, there before uh, the modern versions of the Japanese people arrived. And you learn about their culture and all that stuff. So it's pretty interesting. If you like history, you're you're gonna like it. Plus, it's action packed and it's uh, uh, more comedic too. Wait, but what book do, is this? Golden Kamui. It's a oh. manga. Huh? Yeah. This is volume glitter. twelve. That's a yeah, yeah, volume twelve. <laughs> God, you should be able to read that in a day. All the way up to mm -hmm. twelve. I'll listen to the. I'm not a convert. <laughs> I read three mangas. I'm the expert now. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, I don't know any of these titles. Wow. Infinite Eight from Lion Forge has gotten a lot of good praise. I don't know anything about it, but I heard a lot of good stuff about it. Nice. Love and Lies. Oh, Maidens in Your Savage Season. That's good. That's pretty. That's a pretty good series. Melting Lover kind of reminds me of Dissolving Classroom. <laughs> I still haven't found that part yet, Just I said it made you want to throw up. Maybe I haven't gotten there. <laughs> it was towards the end. Oh, okay, because I just finished the... It's about uh, three quarters of the way through. I just finished the the uh, the apartment one. Yeah, the the, the apartment one. Uh, that that might have been it. Actually, I've got dissolving classroom right here. I can I can take a look and tell you exactly where it was. I'll I'll, I'll find out. I'll read through and I'll see. I might just you know we'll talk about it. Later. It involved it. bottles, nope, lots and lots of bottles. <laughs> All right, there's some here called Open Borders: The Science and Ethics of Immigration. Oh wow, that's, that's very cool. specific. Keep politics out of my comics. Right. <laughs> uh, prison School, that's super raunchy but hilarious. Uh, Saga of Tanya Evil, that's also pretty good. Uh, Silver Spoon, that is super wholesome. If, if you want to read a wholesome series about agriculture and slice of life, Silver Spoon is right for you. The old game from this. I'm worried because this guy has a puppy with him. And what's he going to do with that puppy? <laughs> uh, it's it's written. Is written by the same author from Fullmetal Alchemist, which is one of the uh, more famous manga and anime. Uh, There's a lot of manga on here this week. Jesus. Usually it's just yeah. a All it's right. And, uh, I think that's that, everybody. Mm -hmm. Cool. We've got hmm. through the looking glass and survived. We've gone through the looking glass. <laughs> Somebody's asking uh, for prison. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, we're we're in uh, we're in Wonderland here. Is prison school fifty percent off? I doubt it. No, it is not. Most well, no. aren't because there's not a there's not a retailers don't yeah. get a big discount on mangas. Prison school is hilarious, but it's super not safe for work. And I know that a lot of people will look at it and will judge me silently, but it's awesome. I love get, it. It's really get funny. Get into buying prison school statues. I don't think so. They're really, really raunchy. Trust I bet me. they are. Yeah. <laughs> for a manga, it's, it's twenty dollars. Yeah, because that... they're two in ones, like oh, a okay. little bit. All right. They're bigger. That's that's one thing. I was like, man, mangas are like ten bucks. Man, I can get that for nothing. That's great. I do. By the way, I do like Pixar movies. I just didn't like Inside Out or Coco. Where, no, uh, no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I like Coco. I own the 4K disc. I just didn't feel anything towards the end, like everybody that's else. It. I, I, you didn't, I didn't feel anything. I didn't cry at the end of Coco. I'm like, yeah, that was bound to happen. Uh, whatever. It's just inside out, which I didn't like, but I do love, genuinely love what Pixar does. You know. But I will watch Inside Out this week and I will do a proper review on it and maybe it'll change my mind because it's been ages since I've seen that. You know what I saw that I didn't think was that good? What Zombie Man 2. Oh, it wasn't good? It wasn't the first good. one was Aww. great. All right. The first one is great. It's people were I was people were telling me. This is better than the first one. I was like, oh, sweet. The first one was one of my favorite films. That was great. And I saw it and I was like, eh. Uh, it's, not, it's not terrible by any means. I mean, it, it's worth a watch for just, you know, it's kind of fun. <laughs> it's like, there's like this MacGuffin at the very end where I'm like, holy crap, that's stupid. But I like Coco. People are now, now people think I don't like Coco. Damn it. I liked it. It's a fun movie. I just you didn't. Hot chocolate, everybody. Leave him alone. Yeah. See, look, Freddy, uh, Coco is unforgivable, not liking. I didn't cry either. All right, so NFL Dude 56, uh, he says, Marvel doesn't own the Dark Tower comics anymore. That box set has the adaptation of the first book in the series. The company printing it did a box set of the first Dark Tower mini a month or so ago. So thanks for that info. Cool. There you go. Oh, Geo at the end of Marley and Me with no tears is. I cannot watch Marley and Me. I've 
<laughs> I, oh, no, I way. no, I cannot watch that. I tried and and I I started tearing up and I'm like, nope, nope. I'm I'm not I'm not gonna torture myself with this. No. I'm not going to any movie knowing that that a kid's gonna die or like a dog is gonna die. That's not no. I'm good. Yeah. And as I get older, I'm starting to get more uh, emotional with stuff for some reason. So literally, I was watching something earlier, and, and I was feeling all emotional. I'm like, damn it, I'm going to cry watching Inside Out, aren't I? Up, oh, man. Up, oh, up. Oh. That first 10 minutes up, I kind of have to fast forward that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was brutal. I, my eyes were full of tears at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Jurassic Bark episode from Futurama. I remember that one. Yeah, that's a good one. Oof. The Jurassic Park episode of Futurama? Jurassic Bark. Bark. Oh, oh Jurassic Bark. Yeah, that was a rough one. Yeah, that, if any movie's based around the death of a kid or a death of a dog, like, I'm good. No. Uh, yeah, I don't need that trauma in my life. Uh, Jess should check out Archie by Mark Wade. Have you read Archie by Mark I Wade? I have not. I really should. Um, the hardcovers look really cool. I like them. Yeah, I'd like to get that, and then I'd like to get the um, the one by Adam Hughes, the uh, Betty and Veronica by Adam mm. Hughes. Yeah, I need to get those. Did he do the interior art for that? Or just uh, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I know that's why I want to get it. It's not nearly as detailed as his covers, but it's still Adam Hughes. <laughs> I heard him and uh, him and uh, sorry. Jason because they did a signing at our store, or the, the Orange County uh, store, and they they were talking about how interiors is like a a a, a young person's game. Oh like, wow! You can't do interiors if you're an adult, like if you have a family and kids or something like that. You know, because there's so much work and effort that goes into doing interiors. You know, like 10, yeah. 12 hour days every day at your drawing board. Mm -hmm. so, mm. I can see that. Uh, Rick asked us if the Adventures of Tintin set worth is it worth picking up. Have you guys read the Tintin comics? I, I love Tintin. But I love that last movie that came out, that CGI movie that came out like five, six years ago. So I have no idea. Uh, I, it depends. We didn't look at it long enough for me to see what was in there. I think it was like three books or four or something like that. Uh, the Batman Snyder Optibus is coming out next week, by the way. Somebody was asking about that. Yeah. So ten ten, it's a two hundred dollar box set, eight volumes. It looks like two hundred bucks. Jesus, yeah. <laughs> sixteen hundred pages, uh, including ten ten and Alfart, ten ten in the land of the Soviets. Uh, that's all it really says about what's included in it. So it's got eight books. Yeah. Oh no, wait. I can't read. I can't see the image. Uh. Each of the books has a, the title on it, but I can't read it on the on the image, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, to find these books and yeah, manga, yes, go to InStockTrades.com, where you can get your books and manga up to fifty percent off, plus loyalty discounts add two percent to that. Can I There's get manga there? What's that? I get manga on it on IST. Oh yeah, there's always an Omni Bros Live discount code every quarter. Nice. If you order five, fifty dollars or more worth of manga or books, <laughs> you get free shipping in the United States of a mangaka. Fabulous service, fabulous packaging. That's in stock trades. Dot manga com. It's stock trades. Right. Com. Mangaka and everything. Look at you. That's awesome. My, oh, Mike everybody F. go manga com. Mike F in the chat. Uh, the zero hour omnibus is this week. We we went over it this week, mm -hmm. and it's fifty percent off. And it's fifty percent off. Hell yeah. Yes. I am not reading Astro Boy. No, uh, thank, no thank you. No, no, no. no, no. No. Yeah, you can read. You're not gonna read. I'll your read. Own. I'll read Astro City. Uh, sure. But I'm not Sorry. reading Astro Boy. We're no. Astro. The Collector Geo Top Three Manga Reads with Short Runs: Pluto, 
uh, any um, uh, Wolf's Month. And uh, let's see what else I can recommend. That's uh, Spirit Circle. Spirit Circle, you, Wolf's Month, and uh, Pluto from Urusawa. What are you considering a short run? It Usually a short run will be like, uh, you know, two volumes, six, eight. But like uh, the, the Shonen Jump stuff is usually... Uh, 10, 12, 20, 30 volumes, because uh, those are ongoing series. Their chapters are released weekly, but uh, short running stuff would be like uh, like a Pluto, which was only eight volumes. That's another one I heard a lot, a lot of like positive talk about when I used to listen to 11 o'clock comics. I was really like, that popped in my head. I was like, you know, I'm, let me see what this Pluto is all about. They were talking about. Monster is also great. Yeah, Monster. Yeah. I couldn't get into that one. Tyler Brown said yeah. he's going to get into Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and then into Ooh. I actually did order MMPR. I'm looking forward to that review because I I'm not a fan, so I want to hear from you, good sir, what you think of. Power you Rangers. want to hear from me what I think of Power yeah. Rangers? Yeah. Af after you read it, I want to I want to know what you think. Um, because Jesse, you have zero nostalgia, I would think, with with, with that stuff, right? I don't think your daughter mm -hmm. none. Doing, same, like, same, somewhere. same with TMNT. I had none with that, but but Tyler got me in, finagled me into a bet where if he found it for cover or less, right when there was a massive amount of FOMO going on, that <laughs> if he could find it for cover or less, I'd buy it. And I said, yeah, okay, whatever. And so he found it, and I had to buy it. And so now it's on its way, and now I have to buy it and read it and review it. Hey, Jess, uh, if you find a, if we find Berserk for you, uh, undercover, <laughs> get, away. get away, get away, get away, get away, get away, get away, get away. <laughs> Not today, uh, Satan. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, Death Note's also good. Yeah. Death Note oh story. yeah, I have Death Note, so I'll be reading that at some point in my life. Is it weird that I know all the manga titles that you own? No, I I because I hardly own any. Yeah, you have like yeah. four. <laughs> I'm famous for the ones I own. I only own like four of them. Because <laughs> I do remember you got one as a gift from somebody. Was it Food Wars? Is that the one you got as a gift? Oh, I got that from Tolga Burke. Ah, yeah, good, good memory. Nice. I think it was Food Wars. And you do have My Hero Academia because you did a video on it. Right. You do have the Death Note All-in-One Edition, I think. Yep. Uh, Akira box set. Yep. Uzumaki. Yep. D Dissolving Classroom. That's about it, right? Uh, I have Shiver and Tomie. Oh, Shiver, yeah. Tomie. Shiver and Tomie. Tomie? Tomie, yeah. Tomie. And then I also have Bat Manga. Oh, that one, counts. Yeah. One awesome. volume of Bat Manga. Cool. And that, I think, is it. Yeah. What are, what are some 80s and 90s toy lines that should get a comic that has never been published? Uh, the le every, every 80s toy's got a comic. Uh, did. Cat, uh, not Cadillacs and dinosaurs. Uh, le the Moon Mesa Cowboys. Did that get a toy line? Oh, the uh, Cowboys of Moon Mesa. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that'd, be, I gotta... that'd be a fun comic. <laughs> I'm trying to think of an '80s show that didn't already have like a comic because all the '80s cartoons were was just. Oh, and and sorry. Uh, somebody asked me earlier about Usagi. I don't consider it a manga. It's a graphic novel in the style of a manga because, you know, it's technically done over here and not over there. So it's, it's more uh, manga-esque. But Usagi's still great. Uh, I only have one volume, but I, I like what I've read. I would like to see... I don't know if anybody remembers this show as a kid. Uh, it was called The Get Along Gang. But I like to Don't. see it have like a twist like Scooby Apocalypse did, where it's the get along gang, but in like an ap apocalyptic like universe. Yeah, Mass does have a comic book series. I have I've been I, I have some of that in the store. We've been selling it. <laughs> so like oh. Mask, 
Silver Silver Hawks, uh, He Man, Team and T, Centurions. Um, like I said, like everything that was like an 80s cartoon, Transformers. You know, you had a comic book, you had a toy line, you had a cartoon. <laughs> Mask. <laughs> yes, we'll champion Poon Poon by Christmas. I wish. <laughs> Pirates of Dark Water should get a comic so he could finish the goddamn story. <laughs> Yeah, in 2020, Jess will have caved, and this channel will be renamed Otaku Bros officially. No. <laughs> That's in Earth 3. <laughs> yeah. No. No, there's no room for any manga in my, in my, in my cave. They're small. <laughs> Post-manga Jess will go Omni Hello, Kitty. <laughs> if you can get a, if you can, if you can put a two foot toy diorama in your room somewhere, you could fit a handful of mangas. <laughs> All ninety volumes of of, of One Piece. Ninety two volumes. Jesus Christ! Yeah, it keeps growing. <laughs> but that's that's rare, you know. There are a lot of mangas that are much uh, shorter than that, you know. Why doesn't post Crisis on Infinite Earths Batman what 1986 pre Nightfall get no Omni love? I don't know if there's a demand for that. Uh, Babylon, would you consider Pipo Chu a Pipo Chu? Is that how you say it? A manga, Gio, since it was made in Japan by a Latino and it's an American story. I don't understand a single thing in that <laughs> sentence. <laughs> Uh, I do consider it a manga. It is published as a manga. Usagi is not published as a manga. It has manga sensibilities. Because you do read it, it is in black and white, and it is a Japanese-centric, but you read it like a comic book. So I don't consider it a manga, at least in my opinion. I might be wrong. Probably am. Just needs to get a bunker in his backyard for his new collection. Steve's telling me I need to read Bleach and Naruto. Sure, why not? Naruto is my favorite manga anime of all time. That's my that's my jam. What about, what about burrito? Burrito? Oh, I could use a burrito. <laughs> I had a burrito yesterday. That wasn't that good. I was kind of disappointed. I was like, oh, here's my oh. good cheat meal. I'm gonna have a burrito. This is crap. Yeah, that is so disappointing. You go in expecting like an awesome burrito, and you get like, yeah. And I, I don't go to like your generic like Chipotle or something. This is a place called Tacos Tijuana, and I'm like, oh man, <laughs> this place, this place looks dirty. It looks like it's, it's somebody's grandma in the back doing all the dishes and all the work. It's going to be great. <laughs> great. <laughs> and no, yeah. Uh, earlier, somebody asked me if I was reading Super, Dragon Ball Super. I am not. I am burnt out on all things Dragon Ball. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't. I tried. Uh, I, I'm done with Dragon Ball. It's fun. It's great. It's a classic, but I, I can't get into it. <clears throat> okay. I think that Mike F., do you want to know opinions about detective comics mythology? Peter Tomasi, you should be subscribing to my channel, Omni Dogs Vault, where Batter Days in the Bat Cave just did a review on this book. I saw That's that video. Batter Days in the Bat Cave on that Omni was a great Dogs video. Vault. I think Jess should put a link in the chat to that video. I should. Or a banner. Do the banner thing if you can. I don't know how to do it. Do we have banners? We're not paying for that thing. Yeah, and on the, the right side, you, I showed you last time, you can put a banner with a message on it. I think it was like a week ago? Something like yeah, that? Yeah, probably. Uh, <laughs> how do I... I don't know how to do it. But here's what I'm gonna see for anybody yeah. watching this later, like on the on the on the uh, <laughs> like the, the review watch. Put in put in the chat or put in the, in our comment section what accessories we would come with if we were toys. 
and uh, what manga should Jess read? I no 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 no. I will I will not respond to any comments. Jess will ignore those comments. No peace and love, peace and love. But I will respond to no comments regarding manga. Manga. I'll respond and just sign just his name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can find me on Omni Dogs Vault on YouTube, talking about Detective Comics mythology, and on oh, Instagram, yeah. Omni Dogs underscore Vault. Gabe, mm -hmm. where can they find you? Uh, you can find me in the Omnibus Collectors Facebook group. Don't add me on Facebook. And a weekend geekdom. Where can they find you? You can find me on my channel, A Week in Geekdom, talking about manga, comics, and anime. Those are the main three. A Week in Geekdom on YouTube. I need to watch uh, Demon Slayer. Yes, you do. <laughs> and I need to watch Watchmen tonight. I'm, I hope that file I downloaded worked. Oh, man. That pilot was awesome. I loved it. So good. Uh, highlighter, he's got me covered. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw that comment. <laughs> okay, on behalf of my co hosts and our fabulous sponsor, InStockTrades.com, thank you to the chat. Thank you to our viewers. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Feel free to leave a comment. Don't bother leaving any comments about manga. I will answer no questions about manga. I am not even remotely interested in manga. Give me I'm suggestions on All manga. manga questions to Gabe now. Yeah. He is the interested person in manga. He is the one. Direct them all to Gabe. 20th Century Boys is up next. That's right. Gabe is the one. So peace and love, peace and love, but no manga. Peace and love. Bye-bye. Peace and love. I love manga.